Hello and welcome. I've got Nick here as my tech support beside me, so she's in charge of all the slides and the text box this evening. So hello, welcome. I can see, I feel like I'm on romper room. Hello, Peter, Rebecca, Ashley, Yvette, Vanessa, hello. And there's lots of other people here. Many of you have not been on any of our webinars before, so welcome. Uh, our webinars are very much designed to teach you some cool stuff, uh, have a lot of fun, and we want to challenge your thinking and push your thinking. So sometimes we say stuff that might uh, challenge the way that you think, and we're absolutely doing that on purpose. Now, before I start doing that, I would like to gain your permission that that's okay. Now, I am going to um, just show you on this screen here, we have a text box. Now, these webinars are going to be interactive through the text box. So if you see this on your screen, perhaps a little orange uh, arrow on the right-hand side of your screen, you need to click it and a big text box will open. So I would like everyone to just write in the text box that you're going to be okay with these series of webinars if we challenge your thinking and push your thinking and perhaps get you to work. Is that okay? So please uh, agree to that or maybe you're not the right person for our program, but I need to know that <laughs> that is going to be fine with everyone. So Nick's going to tell me when we've got everyone on board because if there comes a time when I'm asking a question and you've all gone silent, you know that I'm now going to say to you, come on, you all agree that it's okay for me to ask you these questions and for you to work and for me to challenge the way that you think because the whole point of, these pro of this program that Nick and I have designed is it's essentially group coaching. Now, it's the next best thing to one-on-one -on -one coaching. One-on-one -on -one coaching is obviously ideal, but in a business situation and uh, with when you've got a large team involved and there's many businesses on this call tonight, it's much more cost effective to do it in a group and we are going to make these group coaching sessions uh, as real to life as one-to-one -one coaching as we possibly can. So we absolutely need your participation in order for that to happen. We've still got a number of you that haven't said that it's okay. So um, just type an okay in the text box for us so we know. So we know you're good to go. We know that you can hear us, that you're listening, that it's okay to, for us to get you to work and to ask questions. Thank you. We've got a cool little screen here on our side. We can see everyone that's on the call. We can see who's responded, who hasn't responded. We can see if you're looking at other screens or not. We, uh, we know lots about what you're doing. So no place to hide for the next 60 minutes. So we've almost got everyone. I just need a few more people that haven't yet committed to us pushing your boundaries, challenging you, your thinking, getting you on board and getting you guys to work. We absolutely need a yes from everyone before I will proceed. So there's just a few more people coming on now. Okay, okay. I trust that they're not reluctant okays. I'm trusting that they're... Okay, so I'm pretty sure we've got everyone. Nick's waving me on, so I think she's going to go after a few of you on there and send you some messages saying come on, please give me an okay. So she'll let me know later once you've all told me. All right, so Nick needs to change my screen here. So Inspire Tribe is made up of Nick and myself. Most of you have, have probably met one of us. Some of you may have met both of us. We work on this business together and Nick does a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and I tend to do the majority of the talking on the webinars. Perhaps some of you have seen us live together. We present live together. Um, and she's always here sitting beside me with the webinars, but I tend to do lots lots more of the speaking. Right, now you're all on this webinar because you are part of our Next Level Mindset program, which is very exciting. This is one of the bonus webinars that we're offering as part of the program. Now the program actually officially kicks off on the 11th of November, and we're going to go through 18 different topics with you over a, a rough course of about 12 months. And this is the first of four 90-day planning sessions, which we just wanted to put in um, on top 
in addition to the program that we're offering you. Now, tonight it's going to go for about 60 minutes, so we should wrap up just uh, a little bit before nine o'clock. And I would like you to grab a piece of paper. Now, when I say piece of paper, I personally would prefer to just work with an actual piece of paper and a pen, but you're welcome to open up a Word document if that suits you better. And I also would like you all to have your Excel spreadsheet that we emailed you. So the email that you would have got from us bright and early this morning at 6 a.m. had an attachment on it and it had an Excel spreadsheet and that is something that we will be filling in this evening. So if you can all just make sure that you've got a Word, either a Word document open or a physical piece of paper beside you, you might need a couple of sheets. Don't just sort of write on the back of a receipt or anything. I need you to have a little bit of room. And you definitely need your Excel spreadsheet printed out. If you don't, for whatever reason, just another piece of spare paper and you can transfer it onto your sheet later on. So when you've all got that, can you just give me a yay? Uh, and then we'll start moving on. So piece of paper, your Excel spreadsheet, and ready to move. Okay, we've got lots of yays coming through. Fantastic. Yay! All right. Okay, so w one more thing. I really, really need you to engage th this evening. You've all, you've heard it all before as far as, you know, you get in what you put, well, sorry, you get out what you put in. Um, Tonight, there's not probably going to be a lot of engagement through the text box necessarily, but I'll be checking in with you just saying, right, have you done this? Is it ready to move on? So tonight's actually a fair amount of work on your own, on your papers and in your, in your uh, Excel spreadsheet. But other weeks, there's going to be lots of questions asked of you that we need responses in the text box for. Now, we promise you that the more notes that you make and the more interactive you are on these calls, you're going to walk away feeling fantastic and a lot more inspired than what you would if you don't engage. So I got your permission before, so I'm just reminding you one more time that um, it's imperative to get the most out of this program if you engage as much as possible. Now some of you may have heard this before and because I have said it a few times before because I love it and it's quite important statement. That more people, well sorry, most people spend more time planning a holiday than they do their life. Now why do you reckon this is? And if you could let me know via the text box. Why do you think more people, and this might be quite shocking to you or surprising to you, that more people will sit around and plan their, um, spend more time planning a holiday than actually sitting down and planning their life. Why do you think that is? Now, I can't read all of your responses, but we're just going to pick a few of them. Okay, we've got here, because planning a holiday is enjoyable. Yes, uh, people um, comment here, they don't think that they can change their life. Yeah, very true, so they, they spend time planning what they classify as escaping their life rather than actually planning their life. Yep, your holidays are fun, yet life is more mundane. Yeah, well, it can be, or or not, um, because their life is too busy to stop and plan. Yeah, I like that. But that's actually, the, that's true. And I'm going to say that I think for a lot of people, planning freaks them out a little bit. So for many, um, and this isn't the case for everyone, but I think for many people, often people will say to me in my private coaching practice, oh, you know, I have a fear of failure. So what if I set these plans or these goals in place, but then I can't do them? I always kind of have a bit of a giggle with them and I go, look, it's actually not a fear of failure. It's a fear of succeeding. So a lot of people actually believe, well, hang on, if I make plans, you know, if I sit down and make plans and think about what I, what I want my life to be, then what if I actually achieve this? What if, it, what if it actually comes through? And then unfortunately what the majority of people feel is that they feel restriction around that. Now what, we're here to sort of bust that myth I suppose, if that does apply to you, it may not apply to all of you, but I'm going to say there'd be a, there'd be a portion of you on the call that, that that might ring true for. What if freedom, so what if we felt freedom and felt momentum with planning? Okay, now that's just a rhetorical question. You can you can answer that yourself if you like. But we um, 
we not we all know the importance of planning and what can come from planning. It's just getting you over that initial bump to sit down and, and take the time. And that's exactly what tonight is for. Okay, I've got a I, I've got a cool comment here. Because of the enormity of planning an entire life. That's actually true. I think a lot of people think that, oh my goodness, ha, ha, how on earth can I plan my whole life and there's all these external factors that are going to come into play and how do I do that? That's why we have broken it down into 90 day chunks. I've got a slide later about an elephant and uh, well, I'll make that joke then when you see the slide but um, if we break it down into tiny little pieces, it's much easier to plan. All right, so I actually want you to think back over the last 90 days that you've just all lived through. Now it's going to be very different for all of us. So the last 90 days, if you need me to jog your memory, is August, September and October. And I just want you to think for a little bit, you don't need to interact with me here on the text box, I mean you can if you like, but just think about these for yourself for the moment. What goals did you set for yourself over the last 90 days, if any? Some of you may have, some of you may not have. And just think about what did you achieve over the last 90 days? Now for some of you, you might be coming up blank. For some of you, you might have gone, yeah, wow, I did, I did an enormous amount over the, last, over the last 90 days. I want you to also think about, oh, I hopefully, hopefully you can still all hear me. I just got a little thing saying that the sound has ended. Can you still hear me? If someone can just write a yes. Oh, hello, hello. I'm just going to keep rambling here for a moment. Can anyone hear me? I don't know whether to keep talking or sit here. Nick's just fixing a technical difficulty at the moment. Can you hear me? I'm just sitting here, we think we've just lost our internet connection, but if you can hear me, if someone can just put a yes in the text box, that would be wonderful, so I know we're still connected. Hello? Hello, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if everyone can hear me or not. We just we re, we just lost internet connection for a moment. But if anyone can hear us, could you just put a yes in the text box so I know that you've got us back? Um, I'm hoping that someone can hear. Nick's just frantically trying to log us back on here.
if you turn the cert, like if you turn the internet on and off. Sorry guys, if anyone can hear what we're saying, um, I know the screen has frozen. This has never happened to us before. We've run these programs many times, we've run many webinars and this is the first time that this has happened. So apologies, we're working uh, our hardest to get you back online if anyone can hear us. Okay, so the recording the recording just stopped for just a moment there. So I'm just going to um, just for the for the sake of the people that are listening to this recording, as not everyone could make it. I was just saying then, let's go back over your 90 days. What goals did you set for yourself? What did you achieve? How did you grow? And if you had to describe the last 90 days in a word, what would that be? And that were the words that I was just reading out. All right, now my next question is, what potential opportunities were you not confident enough to grab hold of in the last 90 days? So I think for many of us, there were opportunities that were possibly presented to us that we thought, mm, the timing's not right, or oh, I'm, not, I'm not quite ready, or perhaps it wasn't a confidence thing, but what was perhaps presented to you in the last 90 days that you didn't grab hold of, and are these things that you could do in these next 90 days? And my last question to you for this section is, um, how did you guys invest back in yourself in the last 90 days? People here are doing, yep, I did all I could. I've invested in some short courses. Yes, the last question I said was, how did you invest back into yourselves in the last 90 days? We've got here joined a yoga class. We've got a few here joined this program. Yep. We've read a book on how to be human. <laughs> nice. Okay, so one of the most important models in coaching is the be, do, have model. Now, this is actually quite important because most people actually start this ask about. Now, <laughs> most people think, okay, what is it that I want to have? And they, and they only just think about that. So then when it comes to planning, they don't do anything because they're so focused on, oh, well, I just want to have X, Y, Z, that the second something becomes difficult, they fall off the wagon and they can't actually achieve what it is that they want to achieve. Some people actually go to the next step, which is do, and they think, all right, what are some of the things that I need to do in order to have what I want? But the most crucial step and the step that most people don't actually get themselves to, which is what we'll be focusing on tonight, is who do I have to be in order to do the things I need to do to have what it is that I want to have. Now, that seems pretty simple. The B, however, this is so important because the B, it's linked to so much more to our identity than the actions that we do, which is in the do, or if we just focus on the have, that's much more about dreaming, okay? Because who you think you are and how you need to be are so important when planning or, uh, or even just changing what you're doing. So Dr. D. Martini, those of you that have heard of Dr. D. Martini has said, obstacles will melt before a vast vision. What does that mean to you? I'm interested in your thoughts around this quote. And obviously it will be in relation to setting a 90 day plan. 
Okay, we've got here lost opportunities. Interesting. What else have we got? Obstacles will melt before a vast vision. You can overcome obstacles if you see past them. Yes, we've got when we have a big vision and are focused on it, the obstacles will be small, relatively speaking. Yeah, nice. I like it. The hurdles will disappear when you... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read. Okay, all right. So I've got here, the hurdles will disappear the, cl the closer you get. No, I'm actually going to say that that's not correct because the, what this, mind you, I did ask for your opinion on the quote, so yay, so thank you for having a stab in the dark. Um, what this quote means and also what we uh, want to get across, across to you this evening is the obstacles will melt when you know, when you're very clear on for what purpose you're doing what you're doing. It's not necessarily the, cl the closer you get when you're clear on the vision. Little obstacles can happen, but they're insignificant in comparison to the big vision, which is what you're focusing on. Now, one of the ways that, w that we can approach a 90-day cycle, and each time we do these sessions, we're going to we're going to bring it to you through a different a different frame. Okay, so tonight, I want you to actually start thinking about all the different roles that we have. So we've given you an example here on the screen and this is now the first opportunity for you to start writing some stuff down on your piece of paper. Just think about what is it for you. Okay, just jot down all the roles that you play. So when I say roles, I mean, you know, you, you have a role as a partner, if you have a partner. You have, if you're a business owner, one of your roles that you play is a business owner. Another role is a friend. We've got here an investor, a healthy person, a homeowner. Think about whatever roles that you play and just take a couple of moments now to just jot these down on a piece of paper. Hopefully you've got somewhere between kind of six and ten on your list. Okay, and just as you're writing down these roles, I want you to just start now picking five of the, oh, sorry, I just had some feedback in my ears. I want you to pick five of your key roles. So I trust that that is making sense to everyone. I want you to have a list of all the roles that you play in your life. And now just put a little asterisk next to five key roles. Now we are hoping that in your top five roles that you've put a little asterisk next to, I'm hoping that two of them are, well I hope one of them is uh, your role as a partner and your second one is a business one. Now we have business owners on the call, we also have team members on the call, so it doesn't matter if you're a business owner or not, but we want one of your, one of your roles to be something to do with work and we want the other to be something to do with your partner. Now, if you don't currently have a partner, I want you to think back to your previous partner, and if it's been years and years and years since you've had a partner, I want you to think about it from the perspective of um, a, close, a close friend or a close relationship that you have. Okay, so once you've got, all, once you've got those roles written down and you've got five and two of them, one's partner and one's business. Okay. Now I'm going to read you out four questions. We're actually going to start with partner. Now this is very much focused, I just explained to you the model of the be, do, have. This is very much focused on the being part of it. Now I'm going to read these questions out and then I'm going to go back and read them out individually and I'm going to give you 60 seconds for each of the questions. But just let me give you an overview first. These are the questions I'm going to ask you in relation to your partner. So how do you, how do you feel you are currently being in this role as partner? And if you look here in your top left hand part of the page, this is what I'm asking you here. Okay, so how do you feel that you're currently being in this role as a partner? Next question will move across to here, which is how does your partner currently see you? Okay, how does your partner currently see you? Then we want you to come down here on the page to think about a time frame. So something that you're comfortable with, it, but we're going to work on 12 months, but for you, if it's six months, if it's 24 months, or if it's five years, that's 
totally up to you what time frame you want to work on. I'll just be saying 12 months from now on. So in 12 months time, how would you, how would you like to be on a consistent basis in this role? And the last question is, in 12 months time, how would you like your partner to describe how you are being? So I trust that those questions make sense. So I'm going to start, Nick's going to do some timing for me. I'm going to start with first question. So everyone think of their partner or significant other or close friend if you're not in a partnership with someone. And the 60 seconds starts now. How do you feel you are currently being in this role as partner? Now I'm giving some examples here as you're writing this. You could be loving, open. Anything that starts with I am is a being statement. So I am loving, I am open. Perhaps you could look at the negative stuff too. I encourage you to not shy away from the negative stuff. Perhaps you might be writing, I am selfish or I am boring or I am rude. Whatever you're doing, please write that down. We've got 30, that's at the 30 second mark. Fifteen seconds to go. Okay, start to wrap that up. Now we've just got a couple of seconds to go and that is 60 seconds. Alright, the next question is how does your partner currently see you? And go, 60 seconds on that. How does your partner currently see you? It may be the same as how you're currently being, it may be entirely different. Think about it from their perspective. Pretend that you're your partner. How do they currently see you? So just down, write down lots of words. They can be sentences. They can be just dot points. You've got 30 seconds left on that question. How does your partner currently see you? This is not necessarily how you'd like to be seen. Be as honest as you can here. We're not asking you to share these at all. This is just for your own personal work. You've got about 10 seconds to go on that question. And again, just be as honest and as open as you, as you can. And that's 60 seconds on that. Okay, the next question is, in 12 months' time, how would you like to be on a consistent basis in this role? So in your role as partner and go. So perhaps you'd like to be exciting, perhaps you'd like to be more communicative, uh, happy or relaxed. Think about how you would like to be 12 months from now. So this is your ideal. Okay, we've got about 30 seconds to go on that question. think about it from if that's how you were to be remembered. Maybe that's a motivation for you. This is how you were to be remembered if it was your last day. How would you like to be on a consistent basis as a partner? And we're just wrapping up that. Now the next question is in 12 months time, how would you like your partner to describe how you are being? and go on that one. So again, potentially if in 12 months time it was your last day, yeah, how would you ideally like your partner to see you on that final day? How would you like to be described? So when you're writing these, try to be as um, as high level as possible. Don't don't kind of get caught in the nitty gritty, but use sort of big describing words how they would how they would see you and how they would feel about you in an ideal sense. So move away from the detail. Okay, we've got about fifteen seconds left on that one.
So some of you are writing in the text box, but that's fine. Looks like the majority of you are writing in your uh, on your piece of paper, which is perfect. All right, good. So that's partner. Now I'm actually going to ask you sort of similar questions now in relation to your work. So perhaps if you need a new piece of paper, just get yourself organised with a new piece of paper. Think about it from a work perspective. So I'm going to give you 45 seconds on this one because now this is the second time you've done it. Your brain is a little bit more used to this. So how do you feel that you are currently being in your role, whatever your role is at work? And go. So how are you currently being? Are you playing small? Are you playing big? Are you committed? Persistent? Are you settling? Do you have a half-hearted approach? How are you currently being at work, in your role at work? Just jot down some bullet points. If you're not at work, if you're at home, how are you currently being in that role at home? If you work part-time, just use that as your example. Okay, everyone is going to be slightly different. Okay, about 10 seconds to go on that question. How are you currently being in this role? And stop. All right, now in your work, now we've got different perspectives on this call as I was saying before. So if you're, if you're a leader, I want you to think about your most challenging team member. If you're a team member, I want you to think about your boss or your most challenging team member. Or even better than that, I would like you to, to try it from this perspective. How does the business see you? So if your business was its own identity, Okay, so if you considered your business as something that requires your love and attention like a child does, okay, if your business was a person, how would it see you? So you can apply that if you're at home, if you're working part-time, if you're a business owner, whatever it applies to you. The question is, and I'm starting it now, you have 45 seconds, in your work, how does your ex currently see you being? And that's not your ex-partner, that's your insert, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's, if it's your boss or your team member, whoever you've chosen. And just as you're writing this down on your piece of paper, just let whatever comes out um, just it, okay. I've just I've just had a question here from someone. We're just we're just writing on a blank piece of paper. You can just put a cross in the blank piece of paper, and you're writing your responses. We've just given you an example on the screen, and stop on that. So you've now just completed the. How does your boss or team member currently see you being? Okay, the next question for business, actually, can I, just, can I just check in, can I just have a handful of you just give me a, a yes in the text box that you're all following and that you're all up to speed and that you're currently doing this? Yep, great, okay, fantastic, good. Okay, that's all I need, thank you. All right, so question three, this is still in relation to work. In 12 months' time, okay, how would you like to be on a consistent basis in this role. So if you're if you're a leader, if you're a business owner, if you're a team member, if you're self-employed, whatever it is, in 12 months time, how would you like to be on a consistent basis? Go. You have 45 seconds. So this is your chance to dream and think about your ideal. not necessarily what you're doing now, how would you like to be in 12 months time? Okay, about 15 seconds to go. I hope you're jotting things down at a reasonably rapid rate now. And wrapping up and stop. Okay, and the fourth question is, in 12 months time, how would you like to be seen in this role by whoever you chose in question two? Okay, so question two was in your work, how does your blah, blah, currently see you being? 
So question four, in 12 months time, how would you like to be seen in this role by whoever you chose in question two and go? Okay, 10 more seconds to go. And stop. Great, now I would love to go through all five roles with you, but we're not going to have the time to do it because of our little technical glitch. So what I would love you to do after the call tonight or tomorrow when you have some time, I'd like you to pick three other roles and ask those same questions of yourself. So you've got that piece of paper now, you've got how you currently been, how you currently been seen and then in the future how do you want to be and in the future how would you like to be seen. So can I just get a yay from everyone that understands that and will complete three more roles in their own time just for the sake of everyone on the call so I can keep on moving. Great, okay, good, we've got an overwhelming response there, fantastic. Good, thank you. Okay, so that was all around the being, which is very important and that's the first That's the first step, getting clear on who it is that we need to be. Now we're moving you through to the next step, which is doing. Okay, and our, um, our Next Level Mindset program, it's essentially all about expand, expanding what you already have to get the best out of you. So many of you come with a lot of experience already and some of you, some of the topics that we speak about are going to be totally new to you, all right? So we need to cater for everyone in our program. And it's very important to the both of us for you to have the next 90 days, the best 90 days that you've had. And then the next 90 day one we do, we'd love an improvement on these 90 days. Now, most of you have completed the questionnaire that we've sent to you, so thank you very much for that. I think we've got about 80 or 85% of people have completed the questionnaire, which is great. So for those people, this might come a little bit easier, this next section, and for the people that haven't quite submitted their, their questionnaire, I'm sure you've been thinking about the questions on the questionnaire and you're just taking your sweet old time to send it to us, but we would love that sent in ASAP. So. The more that you write down, generally speaking when planning, the clearer your mind will become in achieving what you're setting out to achieve. So I would like you to think about what you want to create over the next 90 days. Now I'm trusting that you all have your 90 day uh, sheet in front of you. And what I was saying before about the whole 90 day thing, you've heard the analogy of you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And I kind of blew my cover before because I said I had a funny joke about elephants and now it seems a little bit too rehearsed but um, <laughs> we're just going to eat the elephant bit by bit, okay? And I know I've got a bit of a funny picture here because we're going to eat the we're going to eat the elephant in front of the baby. So I know that's a little bit gross but um, or a little bit weird. But the 90 day plan just allows us to break our planning time into little pieces. All right, so. Um, <laughs> a few of you were responding to my joke, so okay, thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so I trust that you all have your sheet in front of you. And the first thing in the sheet is what are your, what are your, air, what are your areas of focus? I need to, um, oh, that's not the thing I thought of, but okay, no, that's fine, then. that's fine. All right, so your areas of focus. The best way to do this is to look back at your five roles. Okay, so um, you may not necessarily need to do partner if you don't have a partner, but if you have a partner, I'm gonna suggest that one of your areas of focus should be your partner. Uh, another one for those of you in business, especially as leaders, need to have business as an area of focus. And even if you're a team member and you're going to work every day, it's a huge part of your life, so I would love to see that as your area of focus. So I have partner and business as the first two, and then it's up to you what other three that you want to put as your area of focus. So you've all got this Excel, uh, I keep calling it Excel, we did it in Excel, but you've just got it as a piece of paper. So have your piece of paper there, and just now write along the top what your five areas of focus are going to be for the next 90 days. 
Oh, okay. All right. And, and Nick's just saying, look, on the off chance that you haven't printed it out or you, you don't have it there with you or the dog ate it or something, just use a blank piece of paper and just, we've got an example here on the screen, so just follow our lead on the screen and just write down five areas of focus along the top of a page. All right. I trust that is relatively easy to do based on what we wrote down before from your roles. If that is not clear to anyone, just send us a question in the text box and Nick will be on to that but I'm going to assume that that's fine and I'm going to keep moving forward. Yep. Okay, so the next thing once we've got our areas of focus is we then go to what are the specifics about that area of focus. So let's just use partner because you've all got partner as your first one. What specifically do you want to focus on in relation to your partner? So this is going to be different for everyone. Perhaps it might be, I want to be more connected or I want to have more fun. I want there to be a lot more lightness in our relationship. I want to bring in more passion into our relationship. I want to bring back date night or anything that is relevant to you, just write down three or four kind of specific things that are important for you in relation to your partner. I'm going to give you about 20, 30 seconds to do that. This is a pretty easy one. Often with our partners, we know the stuff that we should be doing, but we get caught up in everything else that we're doing and we don't do it. So if you just write those things down now that are probably on the forefront of your mind anyway. And now, I'm, now I want you to think about, in relationship to your partner, who do you need to be? And I just need you to pick one word. So perhaps your word might be open or forgiving or loving or patient. Perhaps it needs to be energetic. Just pick one word that you can identify with that's going to anchor you back to, yeah, you know what, in the next 90 days in relation to my partner, yeah, there's all the specifics, but who do I actually need to be? And just choose your word and write that in. Now, these next three things, we, we've called them stop, maintain and start. This is imperative because we all live in this busy world and we have so much on and we have so much to do and the emails never stop and we've got a lot of commitments. Okay, Now, the last thing we want to do is load you up with more stuff to do. So we are going to start with what are some stuff that you can stop in your area of focus with your partner. So perhaps you're doing stuff that you don't need to do. Now, we could do this per month. I like to take more of the approach of, this is over the no, over 90 days. So just write down perhaps three or four points. What are some things that you would like to stop? Now perhaps this is stuff that you're tired of doing. Perhaps this is stuff that you feel that you're in a pattern of doing. So it's like, oh, you know, I want to stop yelling or I want to stop coming home tired or I want to stop making excuses. Or, again, whatever, whatever is relevant to you. Yes, Nick? One or two that you commit to doing is far better than ten that you don't commit to doing. So pick one or two things that you will definitely stop doing. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Okay, now think about in relation to your partner, what are some cool things that, that I do that I actually quite like and my partner likes and it's working well? And again, just two or three things that are working well that you want to maintain. Things that are going along nicely, they go, yeah, we do have date night every fortnight or every week and I like that and I want to maintain that. Or, you know, I am very affectionate, yep, I'm going to maintain that because that works and I'm all good with that. Okay, so just two or three or three or four points, something that you want to maintain. This is a good process because it just, it reminds you of the good stuff that you're actually doing because we don't always need to improve constantly all the time. So often many of us are doing some cool, some cool stuff that you should keep doing. Okay, and now what are some things that you would like to start? 
So this is over the next 90 days, guys, okay? You, you don't have to do it all in the next three days or anything. So be reasonably ambitious here. You've got all of November, December and January. So this 90 day plan will take you through to the end of the January holidays. And we've got our next 90 day plan, I think, just in the first week of February. So what are some things that you want to start doing? And again, just write down three or four points. And it's much better done in this style because when we think about what we want to stop, that opens up some space for us to start doing some stuff that we would like to do. Okay, I would like you to pick a theme for your 90 day plan. Now I know we've just done partner, I'm going to walk you through the business one as well in a moment. Perhaps you can think of a word now or perhaps you might need to think of your word later. But I asked you before what your word was for the previous 90 days. I would like you to think, okay, what's my word going to be for this 90 day that's coming? And if any of you have got that word, I'd love for you to share it in the text box because it will inspire some others on the call to just hear what other people are writing. What's your word going to be for the next 90 days? You've got a bit of an idea of where you're heading already with who you want to be. You've written down a plan there in relation to your partner or significant other or close friend. Okay, so we've got some words coming through here. We've got positive. We've got life changing. So that's that's a that's a that's an ambitious ninety day plan coming. I love it. Uh, we've got achieving. We've got communicative. We've got progress. Energetic. Balanced. Confident. So whatever your word is, feel free to to write that there now. And thank you for those guys that just contributed there that were very clear on what they had. Okay. The next thing I want you to think about is your 12 month goals. But before we do that, I'm actually going to take you back to the top and we're going to do business. If you already know some if you already know some 90 uh, some 12 month goals, please feel free to kind of write them down here at the bottom of the of the sheet. So as you're thinking about your 90 days, go, oh actually there is something I want to do, but I can't do that in the 90 days. I'll whack it in here because it'll be achieved sometime over the next 12 months. And then when we do this next 90 day plan, you can look down at these 12 month goals and go, oh, actually I might pull that goal into this 90 day. So just that's for you to have a bit of a think about and a little play with around what goals that you want for the next 12 months. Now I'm going to go back and we're going to do, we're going to go through the same process with business. So your second column is business. What specifically do you want to focus on in relation to your business or your work or what you do the majority of the time in your day? So if you're at home, if you're caring for children, if you're running a business, if you're running multiple businesses, what specifically do you want to focus on? So again, just jot down three to five points. And you can use what you just did with your partner as a bit of a guide as to now what to write for the business. Now, I'm conscious of the time, it's nine o'clock and I, um, we very much like to run on time and to time. We had that technical glitch which I apologise profusely about because it's the first time it's ever happened. So if it's okay with you, I wouldn't mind going for another kind of five, five to ten minutes, ten minutes tops. So if you can hang around, that'd be great. If you've got a commitment that you need to go, that's fine and we respect that. But I would love to, I would love to kind of keep you on the call a little bit longer because we, we did lose a little bit of time there. So I'm sorry about that. All right, so once you've done the specifics of your business, who do you need to be at work? running your business, going in there day after day and working. What's one word that you can connect with, just like we did with our partners? Who do you need to be at work? So who do you need to be for yourself? Who do you need to be for your team members? Who do you need to be for your colleagues? Who do you need to be for your boss? So whatever position you're in, we've got everyone on the call tonight. Think about who do you need to be for you. 
Now you might be sitting there thinking, well, I know who I need to be, but you know, I hope my I hope my boss thinks that they need to be X, Y, Z. <laughs> just please, just focus on on you and how you need to be at work or in your business. All right. So again, what kind of what kind of things do we need to stop? As a business owner, what do you need to stop doing? Perhaps you're spending too much time doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. One of the things I often talk about um, with my one-to-one -one clients is work out what your hourly rate is. And if your hourly rate, let's say for argument's sake, is $100 an hour, anything that you could do, anything that you could get done that costs you less than $100 an hour, you should palm off to someone else. So if your hourly rate is $100, you shouldn't be wasting your time sweeping the floor because you could get someone to sweep the floor for $20 an hour. So as a business owner, what could you stop? As a team member, what are some tasks that you're doing at work that perhaps is taking up too much time, that perhaps is unproductive? Perhaps you like doing them, but they're not really that great for the business. So what are some things that you could stop in order for you to have a, I know, I know that this is only one part of your 90 day plan, but you spend, those of you that work full time, spend an enormous amount of time at work. Maybe some things that you dislike doing. Yeah, what, what, are, what are those things for you? Perhaps things that suck your energy. So you get into work and you're like, oh God, I, I, I hate doing that. One of the cool things with Nick and I is we got very clear when we started this business all the all the all the stuff she likes to do and all the stuff she doesn't like to do and I and I did the same and we went well I'll do that and you do that. Now there's only two of us, so those of you that are in a team bigger than two have got more flexibility around the cool stuff you want to do and the stuff that you don't like to do. And you might need to negotiate this with your team members. Hey, I really want to stop doing this, but I'll do the stuff that you don't like if you stop the other thing. Okay, so. Um, it's actually a really good way to think about this from the perspective of work. Well, what are the, what's the stuff that I don't like or I'm wasting time that I want to stop? So I trust that you've filled out that part of your form now. All right, so what are some things that you want to maintain at work? The things that you enjoy doing, the things that you're good at, the things that are making money in your business, the things that are keeping your customers happy, all the resourceful stuff that you go, yeah, I like doing that, I'm good at doing that. That's actually sustainable and um, resourceful for the business. I'm going to keep doing those things. And just feel free to jot down what those things are. Now that should free up some time for you now to write, okay, what are some things that I want to start doing under the heading of work and business? What are those things that perhaps in the last night 90 days I didn't go and do because I didn't think of or I was lazy or I wasn't confident enough to do it or I was a little bit shy or I thought I was too busy. Whatever those things are for you, what are some things that you can start? So again, as business owners, what are some resourceful things that you can now start doing now that you've written, now that you're writing a plan and you're going to have the time and the space to achieve this? As team members and colleagues, what are some things that you would like to start doing? Perhaps it might be um, around soft skills in how you're communicating with other team members, your relationships with your clients, how you are with your boss. Perhaps it's coming into work a little bit earlier or, or not taking as long a lunch break, whatever, whatever it is for you. What are some things that you're going to start? And after doing that business one, think about what goals might have come from there. So if you're a little bit more clearer on, okay, this is what I want to be at work in the next 90 days, but I've just had an idea of something I'd really like to achieve, but I'm going to pop it down here in the 12 month goals. Okay, now this slide, what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become through seeking them. So I'd love your thoughts on this. On this, this is a quote that we sort of bastardized a bit because we wanted to make it <laughs> uh, more aligned with what we thought. But it's a Zig Ziglar quote uh, that we've sort of played around with a bit. But what are your what are your thoughts on this? What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become through seeking them. What does that mean for you guys? I know I've just been talking about setting goals and setting plans. 
and those of you that have done webinars with us before, we always teach you something and, and have a discussion and then we come in and sort of spin it around at the end and, and see what you really think of it. So, all right, we've got here, the journey is what's important, yes. Uh, okay, I've got, I've got one here, so I'm going to read out. The, I'm going to read out the cool comments, and then I'm and then I'm going to read out some some ones that aren't awesome, just just for the benefit of the group. Okay, so I'm going I'm going to question some of these comments. We've got here. It's all about being positive. Yep. Yeah, so being positive is good. However, in relation to what we're talking about, this this quote, sort of quote, speaks more from the perspective of it's good to have a plan and to follow that plan and yeah, be positive and kind of do what you can for that plan but at the end of the day, there's been many, many research based on it's not actually about the goal and what you get at the end but it's who, it, it's who you become through having the plan. I've got written here by someone else, being is more important than having. Absolutely, yes, that is spot on. So that if you... If you become the person that you want to become through chasing these goals, if you achieve the goal or not, it kind of becomes irrelevant if you're being the if you're being the person that you set out to want to be. Okay, we've got another comment here. It's about pushing your boundaries and learning along the way. Beautiful. I love that. So yes, if we don't write plans and we don't set goals, we fall into the pattern of playing quite small. So we just do what we've always done. And we just keep repeating that. Um, one of the, one of my themes with my with mine the ninety day plan is behavioural flexibility. Now I change my theme each time, and this is what I was getting you guys to write. You know what your word might be or what your theme might be. Um, it's always trying to do things differently, and it's less about the achievement of the goal. Although the goals are good, I do want to leave you on on the note of. It's who you are being and who you're becoming when you have a plan in place. So I trust that that I trust that that makes sense to the people on the call. Okay, so that is our ninety day plan, our our first one. I trust that you're all responsible adults in the sense that I would love for you to just spend another twenty minutes or so, just when the call ends in the next kind of two minutes, to just go back and complete that plan. So you've got partner, you've got business, I'd love you to pick your three other roles and just go through that process of the stopping, the starting and the, maintain, and the maintaining. And then once you've done that, I'd want you to stick it up perhaps in your office, perhaps in your room, uh, perhaps, uh, like in your bedroom, perhaps at work, somewhere that you're going to see it and that you can, re that you can remind yourself of it over the next 90 days. And part of the Footbeat pro program is we'll be texting you and keeping you account to the, those 90 day plans. Now one thing that you can do for us is I have all your names on um, my computer screen here and I know probably the majority of you I've, I've, I've spoken to you before uh, but I don't know what you all look like. There's a number of you that have come from businesses that I haven't personally gone in and seen. So if you could all take a photo of yourself tonight just on your phone. Okay, or a good photo that you've got, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but take a photo of yourself on your phone and text it to this number, please, because then we're going to print out your photos and we're going to put it up here on our wall in our office, so when we're running these webinars, I can look at all your beautiful faces, so I've got a real clear visual of who I'm talking to, so I would love for you to do that, please. Um, we will stay around on the call just for a couple of moments if anyone has got any questions about what we've just run through with the 90 day plan, if anyone wants anything clarified. We will be starting our, face group, uh, our Facebook page when the next um, webinar starts, which is the 11th of November. So that is in a fortnight's time on a Monday night. So it'll be the 11th of November, 8 o'clock on, on the Monday night. And then we run it again at 12 o'clock on the 14th, which is a Thursday. So you only need to come to one of those and you can choose which one you come to. So perhaps 8 o'clock on a Monday is more convenient or perhaps 12 o'clock on a Thursday is more convenient. These 90-day plans only run on the Monday night, but every other webinar will be running on the Monday night and the Thursday at lunchtime. So thank you very much. I'm sorry for the technical glitch again. It's never happened to us before, I promise you. So those of you that are new, I that's 
we feel really bad about that, <laughs> but it all came good in the end. So um, would love your feedback or any final comments at the end. Uh, we like to always ch check in at the end with what is the biggest, uh, what's the biggest insight that you got from the session? What did you learn? What did you love the most? So feel free to uh, send us one of those comments and we'll read a few out. And uh, then you are all dismissed. Thank you very much. It was lovely spending the evening with you. As I said, if any of you guys have got questions, feel free to just pop it in the text box. We'll read them out for those that want to stay on the call. And for the rest of you, we will see you in a fortnight. Thank you. It was fun. You're welcome. Thank you. It's got me thinking. That's good. That is always a good thing to get you.